Varmt välkomna till det här seminariet som Finlandsinstitutet tillsammans med Folk och Försvar arrangerar om finskt och svenskt samarbete om krisberedskap och civilt försvar. Jag heter Maud Holma von Heine och är generalsekreterare på Folk och Försvar. Och jag kommer moderera det här tillsammans med min kollega direktör Anders Eriksson på Finlandsinstitutet. Lämpimäst i tervetuloa Folk och Försvaren i Tukholma Suomi-instituten järjestämän seminarin, jonka aiheena on Suomen ja Ruotsin välinen yhteistyötä siviilipalveluksen ja kriisivalmiuden alalla. Tämä on uusi ala maiden välisessä yhteistyössä ja sopimusaiheesta allekirjoitettiin kaksi kuukautta sitten 10. helmikuuta. Maud Holma von Heine on Folkoforsvarin pääsihteri. Folkoforsvarin tehtävä on ylläpitää ja edistää turvallisuuspoliittinen keskustelu Ruotsissa. Oma nimeni on Anders Eriksson, olen Tukholman Suomi-instituutin johtajana. Ja me tullaan Moodin kanssa toimimaan tämän seminaarin moderaattoreina. Tervetuloa minunkin puolestaan. Ja, Finland och Sverige har långtgående samarbeten inom en rad olika områden. Vi har gemensamma geografiska förutsättningar och säkerhetspolitiska omvärld. Vi är båda medlemmar i EU, men inte i NATO. Dessa likheter och gemensamma utmaningar utgör grunden för flera olika samarbeten. Inte minst inom det militära försvaret så har vi ett långtgående samarbete som nyligen fördjupades till att utökas med möjligheter för samarbete bortom fredstid. Men vi har samtidigt olika historiska erfarenheter och också olika förvaltningsmodeller som gör att vi planerar för och hanterar kriser på olika sätt. Och den senaste utvecklingen på det här området är den avsiktsförklaring som de båda inrikesministrarna Sveriges Mikael Damberg och Finlands Maria Ohisalo undertecknade i februari i år. Avsiktsförklaringen klargör ländernas intentioner att fördjupa det bilaterala samarbetet på områdena krisberedskap, civilt försvar och räddningstjänst. Målet är att förbättra ländernas förmåga till resiliens och främja gemensamma intressen inom krigsberedskapsområdet. Med utgångspunkt i det här dokumentet som skrevs under i februari av de båda ministrarna ska vi idag diskutera framtiden för det här samarbetet mellan Finland och Sverige. Vi har med oss Sveriges inrikesminister Mikael Damberg och statssekreterare Olli Pekka Parviainen hos Finlands inrikesminister Maria Ohisalo. Och Hisalo själv sitter i ett möte med den finska regeringen för tillfället för att hantera den nu pågående pandemikrisen. Det är skälet till att hon inte är med här idag. Därefter kommer vi att få ett myndighetsperspektiv från Kimmo Kohvaka som är räddningsdirektör vid finska inrikesministeriet och tillförordnad generaldirektör Camilla Asp från myndigheten för samhällsskydd och beredskap. Avslutningsvis kommer vi också att få höra från två experter på området. Från Sverige har vi Fredrik Bynander som är chef för Centrum för totalförsvar och samhällets säkerhet vid Svenska Försvarshögskolan. Och från Finland Mika Hytiäinen som är militärprofessor och docent vid den finska Försvarshögskolan. Seminariet kommer att genomföras på både engelska och svenska. De finska talarna förstår alla svenska men kommer att prata engelska under sina programpunkter. Medan de svenska talarna kommer till största delen att prata svenska. Under rådande pandemi så har vi ingen publik på plats och talarna finns med oss på länk. Seminariet sänds live på Youtube men kommer också att finnas tillgängligt i efterhand på respektive organisations hemsida. Därmed hälsar vi alla er varmt välkomna och det är dags att börja. And we will start this seminar with the Minister of Home Affairs in Sweden and State Secretary for, ministry, for the Ministry of Interior Affairs in Finland to each give a short speech on the recently uh, adopted cooperation agreement. It will be followed by a common discussion. First of all, we will give the floor to Oli Pekka Parviainen, State Secretary for the Ministry of Interior Affairs in Finland. The floor is yours, Pekka. Oli Pekka. Thank you. So, uh, best 
med Olli Poika Kaprviainen och jag är landsekreterare på den finska inrikesminister Maria Ohistola. Tyvärr är hon förhindrad att delta i dagens webinarium på grund av regeringsförhandlingen. Hon skickade sina värmaste hälsningar och konstaterar att samarbetet på detta område är väldigt viktigt och Finland stöder för det alla sätt. Jag ska försöka mitt bästa att istället för ministern att föra från några tänkare och idéer i frågan. Eftersom vi tyvärr måste mötas via Teams tror jag att det är bäst att jag fortsätter på engelska. Jag vill ändå på poängtera att Finland som är ett tvåspråkigt land gärna vill mötas så långt som möjligt på svenska. Men jag täcker redan nu för förstörelsen av mitt bruk av engelska i detta sammanhang. So as we do know, uh, the ministers of interior Maria Ohisalo and Mikael Damberg signed a letter of intent in February on the enhanced cooperation between our countries in crisis preparedness, civil defense and rescue services. Cooperation between Finland and Sweden in this field is a very timely topic, not only due to the pandemic situation. The letter of intent gives a political signal that the topic is important. It is also important to emphasize that the deepened cooperation between our countries also includes other areas. At the moment, we are preparing a bilateral police cooperation agreement between our countries. This is also many thanks to you, uh, Minister Danbury, for this. Uh, the cooperation between our countries in crisis preparedness, civil defense and rescue services is already functioning and close on many levels. One good example is the daily bilateral rescue and cooperation across the border in Torneo Dolen. Uh, there is always a need for strengthening already good cooperation in crisis preparedness, civil defense and rescue services. The COVID pandemic has shown the need to increase our efforts to cooperate and prepare together. Also for future crises. The goal of the enhanced cooperation between our countries is to further strengthen the country's ability to prevent and deal with major disaster and unexpected crises. As we have seen over the past year, crises can surprise with their scale and length. We do not know, of course, how the crisis will look like in the future, but we do know that, for example, climate change will pose a major challenge. It is important that we have an ability to react and to tackle various crises, including the consequences of, for example, hybrid and cyber attacks. We can also coordinate our efforts in civil preparedness planning, work together more efficiently in EU and international fora, and strengthen our ability to provide and receive assistance from each other. This is one of the concrete questions we will look into more depth, also in Nordic context. It is important to emphasize that even if we now work on strengthening the bilateral cooperation between our countries, the work in the Nordic context in this field is very important and valuable. Finland has the chairmanship in many Nordic forums this year, for example, in the so-called Haga cooperation, which our ministry is in charge for. We are also strengthening civil military cooperation on a Nordic level together with colleagues from the Ministry of Defense. As we know, the ongoing pandemic has demonstrated that questions related to preparedness are more pressing than ever and that deeper cooperation is indeed welcomed. Finnish and Swedish societies are deeply interconnected and therefore we must strengthen our resilience together. Our countries share a similar outlook on effective crisis preparedness. I want to emphasize also the mutual benefits of future strengthened cooperation. Both countries have strengths and know-how that we can take advantage of in this work, but both of us probably have fields where development is needed. It is important that we find fields of cooperation where we can also learn from each other. From the Finnish point of view, for example, we are following closely the Swedish total defense work, especially, of course, in the civil defense side. And just to mention one concrete field of cooperation that we will look into more depth in the coming months is the issue of, of responding to the so-called CBRNE, uh, which is chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear and explosions threats. Uh, this is an important part of the comprehensive security concept in every country, and we see a great opportunity to cooperate bilaterally in this. CBRNE questions are also dealt within other international forums, in example, in the EU civil protection cooperation and as partner countries in NATO civil emergency planning. 
Small countries such as Finland and Sweden can together be bigger than their size and jointly act stronger within the EU, EU and the other international fora. And to conclude, uh, you will later today in the webinar hear more details on the enhanced cooperation between our countries. But I just want to end by reiterating the importance of this work. There is a political will to take these questions forward, and I am sure that the result will be very good. Together, we are stronger. Thank you. Thank you. We will then uh, welcome Mikael Damberg, Minister of Home Affairs in Sweden. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Maud and Kitos uh, Oli uh, Thank you for participating today. Uh, dear Nordic friends, um, um, it, I would like to start by, by stating the obvious, perhaps, but Sweden and Finland have a unique relations uh, and uh, history together. Uh, and this also reflects in a close cooperation in rescue services and crisis preparedness. And we have had a close dialogue between our countries uh, for many years at all different levels. Uh, but the idea of a letter of intent to deepen the cooperation between our countries regarding emergency management, civil protection and civil defense was discussed by Minister Maria Osalo and myself in the autumn and already in February this year we signed it. Truly uh, an evidence of our joint commitment to this course. Uh, but allow me to begin by outlining the work that Sweden is currently uh, undertaking. Sweden is now making a journey in the light of a worsened security situation in Europe. We're strengthening uh, the military defense substantially. Uh, as you probably know, large parts of Sweden's civil defense were disbanded, disbanded after the Cold War. Uh, this contrasts with our Finnish neighbors who have never dismantled their civil protection. I'm therefore proud that Sweden is now making the largest investment in civil defense in modern time. Uh, this year, 2021, the civil protection in Sweden will be strengthened by approximately 1 billion Swedish crowns. Uh, and in the coming years, the investment will increase gradually. Together with the funds we provided already in 2018, the government proposal means that civil protection will be strengthened by a total of 4.2 billion uh, in 2025. But it's not all about money. Uh, an investigation that is now on the table aims to create clear responsibilities and management, con uh, management conditions and a stronger coordination within civil protection and crisis preparedness in Sweden. The investigation include a new structure for authorities uh, and a new division of the country into larger geographical areas for civilian management and coordination. A further central part of the historical investment to build up Swedish defense preparedness and ensure that Sweden has a civil protection in place that physically protects the civilian population. These investments enable in-depth cooperation within, with Finland on issues such as total defense and crisis preparedness, areas that during the pandemic have really exposed our common challenges and the importance of good cooperation. Let me continue by broadening perspectives. The international and external threats face our society today are complex. They are occurring and evolving fast. The climate crisis is a global major challenge and the security situation in our part of the world is also uh, unfortunately uh, deteriorating. The pandemic is, like I said, of course, another example. The digital transformation uh, comes with major opportunities for both Finland and Sweden, but also risks and cybersecurity is therefore essential for both our countries. These complex questions are reasons why we want to formalize our cooperation with this letter of intent. The letter of intent is a framework for future work. It sets goals and ambitions when it comes to deepening Finnish-Swedish bilateral cooperation in the area. The goal is to improve our country's ability individually and together to be resilient and to promote common interest in crisis preparedness, civil protection and civil defense. Above all, the letter of intent gives a signal to our crisis management systems that it's time to step up, step up our common efforts. But having said this, it's also important to once again emphasize that our bilateral cooperation in civil protection is already very well developed and perhaps almost so smooth 
that it does not attract uh, much attention today. In other words, we start off from a very high level. The relations between our countries are long lasting and robust. The defense cooperation between Sweden and Finland has been developed uh, for several years now. With this letter of intent, we will now have the possibility to advance the cooperation also on the civilian side. As we can see, there are many reasons why we should continue the path we're taking. As I said, I'm convinced that now after the pandemic, we can and should work together to create a strong crisis preparedness. Who knows what the crisis will look like next time. When it comes to give and receive support, it can, for example, be about resources to support in events of major forest fires or major chemical accidents. We still remember when we received support from Finland during the forest fires in 2018, one of several examples. I further believe, I further believe that we can deepen the cooperation in matters of chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear and explosive substances. Um, uh, regarding CBRNE, it is both about crisis management after an unwanted event has occurred, but also about preventive work. I'm determined that we must work together to control, monitor and stop the misuse of CBRNA substances. Uh, and when it comes to security of supply, Finland has experiences of warehousing in a way that Sweden has not had in recent years. Even here, we're, we are very keen to learn from the Finnish experiences. To conclude, uh, I want to say that I'm convinced uh, by strengthening our bilateral cooperation, we also strengthen the Nordic civil protection cooperation within Haga and the work within the European Union, for example, Resc EU. As we share many of the same challenges, the strategic solutions must be developed together with others. And we show political leadership and direction. And it's now time to start the real work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. and Oli Poika Parviainen. Uh, my first question to you would be that <coughs> you're both mentioning that there is already an extensive cooperation in this field between the two countries and also within under fora. So, could you elaborate a bit about the need you are? Uh, Poning that this, uh, there's a strong need for a deeper cooperation between the two countries. What is the background for the need and in what way will this acknowledgement uh, make the cooperation even deeper? Would uh, Mikael Danberg, when you start, since I happen to see you in the camera yeah. first, so please. Yes, I think I mentioned it uh, to start with, but but I think to close the closer cooperation for Sweden is both uh, when it comes to crisis preparedness, because we think we have a good system today, but we see also new areas uh, on, the, on the chemical side, for instance, the CBRNA, RNE side. We think that we need to do more in Sweden, Finland needs to do more, but together we could develop uh, joint answers to this. Uh, I think that would be more effective uh, and it could also contribute in the in the European framework uh, if Finland and Sweden work together on the strategic issues on this field. I think uh, all, all countries are a bit too small to have all competence in this area, but together we can share competence and be stronger together. And the other part is the, the, the kind of rebuilding of the civil defence in Sweden. Uh, Finland did not dismantle the civil defense uh, after the Cold War. So I know that Finland did pretty much copy-paste the Swedish earlier system, but now you have evolved your system. Uh, and that's very interesting because now when we want to rebuild the system, we see that the, the world has changed. We're more international dependent. We see more private companies involved in, in different areas of, of the civil defense. And, and we see the, the, the risks and the, uh, the cybersecurity threats to our countries. So when we want to rebuild the civil defense, we have to learn from the Finnish experience and perhaps see where we can interact even closer to, to be stronger together. And I think even here we have close links that can be developed even further. And, and we're in, in an exciting phase to, to rebuild and we want to learn from Finland and want to do 
to see what we can do together even more. And to Mr. Oli um, Poika Parviain, and then in what way will this cooperation uh, complement or differ from the other Nordic cooperation within the Haga Declaration, for instance? Uh, th thank you. This is truly the uh, sort of heart of this all. So uh, may maybe I would start by saying that in the current, uh, our gov government's report on foreign and security policy, uh, there is a statement that uh, Sweden is uh, our most uh, valuable and most important bilateral partner. Uh, we have the same uh, uh, view of the world, so sort of, we see the same, same uh, we do the same kind of evaluations and we also have the same idea ab about resilience, for example. So this is, uh, of course, something that always puts sort of our bilateral relations sort of first. But this, this does not mean that the relation in the other Nordic forums is sort of less valuable or something that I, I would more like, likely to say that uh, our special relationship with, with Sweden also strengthens the whole Nordic uh, alliance, if I dare to say. Uh, and uh, what we can do also, uh, it is true that, uh, for example, we have kept our uh, civil preparedness in a relatively high level. Uh, and now that Sweden is uh, upgrading its strategies, uh, we also think that we can also learn from this process. We do not think that our system is in any way uh, sort of finished or ready uh, in, in that way that it cannot, it, it would not be, a, we would not want to uh, sort of to improve it. So we want to improve it. And that is uh, what we can do by also sharing experiences and, and thinking about this in, uh, with together, together with Sweden. This is, and, and also to add in final point of view, uh, in, in more recent years, uh, the questions of, for example, cyber and uh, the, the resilience and interdependencies in society, uh, they have become, ev become ever more important. And this is something also that our societies can think together. Thank you. You both mentioned the, uh, the recent crisis, um, the pandemic. How do you think that uh, Sweden and Finland's different way to deal with this crisis will reflect on the now agreed um, cooperation. What do you think, Oli Pekka? How can we? How can you learn from each other um, and from the way you were handling the pandemic? Uh, the current COVID pandemic. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I would like to start by saying that during the whole time since this whole virus started spreading, we the. The diplomatic channels between our countries have been very uh, hot, so to say. There, I mean, lots of uh, information going on from both sides, and also in the ministerial level. For example, our foreign ministers have kept very close ties, and uh, I think that in general, uh, when someday this all hopefully will be over, we can also see uh, sort of pros and cons of the each individual decisions that have been made uh, during uh, during this whole pandemic. But we, have, we are all sort of traveling in the dark in this matter. And we must understand that uh, it is always based on the best assumption on the current moment when decisions are being made. That's why uh, dealing with pandemic is so, uh, such a difficult task for us all. You closed uh, the area around Helsinki. I, I think, uh, first of all, we should note that we're not through the pandemic yet. So we still have to do the crisis uh, management uh, both in Finland and Sweden uh, and that is, that is in one important question. I, I truly want to underline what Oli Poika said that we have been have, having very close relations also sorting out one, many of the uh, border issues up in the north of Finland and Sweden. We have had close cooperation on that trying to fix uh, the healthcare system to 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 get the economy working for very uh, important um, issues. Uh, although uh, you have to state that Sweden and Finland was struck by the pandemic in very different ways in the beginning, and that also led to different kind of outcomes when it comes to to, to both the pandemic, but also the strategic choices that each country could do and and had the possibility to do. But uh, I I really look forward to also afterwards evaluating uh, the legal frameworks in our countries because we understood quite 
early in the pandemic that uh, Sweden did not have all perhaps the tools that we would like to have had. Uh, and I, I understand that also Finland has, has had had a debate on your legal frameworks handling a pandemic. So I think we can learn a lot also after this pandemic to, to know what kind of uh, preparedness we also have uh, when it comes to lawmaking and, and constitutional questions. The Finnish government closed the area I'm, around Helsinki. I may add. Do you think that will that could have been a good idea even in Sweden, Mikael, to close the area the around the, Sorry. Stockholm? That the Finnish government decided to close the area around Helsinki when the pandemic was very serious. Do you think uh, that Sweden should have the same possibilities to close different geographical areas? Stockholm, for instance. Is that something we can learn from Finland? Well, first of all, it it wouldn't have made that much difference of Sweden because we had the spread of the virus in many more places than only Stockholm. So that was not a kind of relevant way to go. If you have the spread only in one place, it's easier to contain the spread of the virus. Uh, but uh, our, our regulation is 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 not built on protecting others but ash so it might be a kind of good way to look at the framework of what kind of decision a government can do in these kind of events in the future so i think we should do a kind of legal evaluation after this pandemic as well uh, but also looking at the more principal discussion but because i think uh, Sweden has tried to, to handle the, cri the crisis and pandemic without that much of limitation, a legal limitation for our inhabitants. Uh, and that's also values that should be kind of valued when you discuss how to handle a crisis, because otherwise you also uh, perhaps um, uh, 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 reduces uh, the, the, the rights and, and the freedoms of, of your population. That's also a relevant question to, to look into. So it's a difficult questions, but I am eager to see the evaluation also what action actually led to results. It's very hard today when we look at Europe to see at different countries choosing different kind of ways going forward. And we see so much diversity in the results. So it's very hard today to see what's actually worked. And that is one problem still in the pandemic, that the answers is so few. But after after time goes, of course, we will know even more. And we should learn from crisis. And we should always adapt to be more prepared the next crisis than the, question, the, the crisis that you manage right now. Thank you. Uh, Oli Poika, in Finland you have a state of an emergency and you activated your emergency power legislation, which are two things that Sweden does not have. Uh, can you comment on how this has worked? You used this, for instance, for the example with the Nines. But are there aspects of this that you are looking into changing after the experience this far? Or uh, are there any lessons learned that Sweden can <coughs> take from that? Thank you for the interesting question. Uh, Firstly, uh, when we activated these emergency procedures, uh, well, of course, we were glad that we had them, but we, all, we have also seen that uh, there is need of improvement and we are sort of, this is always the thin line we are testing between balancing between uh, maximum liberties and uh, most efficient means to tackle the virus. And to add for the previous question, uh, when we decided to close down the Uusima region, uh, it was in a moment where we did not uh, have this much information regarding the behavior of the virus and also how to how to treat it. So things things are pretty different now, and we have not decided to close any areas or something like that. But uh, the emergency powers have they have given us the possibility. Uh, to do, for example, to close restaurants, which seems to have uh, uh, proven uh, in useful in this area. It is, of course, sad for the entrepreneurs, but uh, when we did, did, did this thing, the spread of the virus started to decline quite rapidly. And uh, also the government, as you may know, tested, sort of, it became sort of a test without, we wanted it to be a test. So, uh, 
the government uh, put to the parliament this legislation regarding the limiting of the movement of people, and it faced a constitutional barrier. So, uh, so it also teached us that uh, we must be uh, very cautious when doing these things. Maybe we proceeded quite rapidly, but of course there has also been sort of luck in our side because after all this, the r rates have started declining without these heavy measures. But uh, the preparedness laws in general, uh, they have to be improved and also are uh, the laws that protect uh, the health of the citizens. There is all, uh, we, have, we are currently evaluating, we have already upgraded those laws, but we are evaluating that maybe we should uh, update them a little more so that we would not have to use the Emergency Powers Act when we want to uh, sort of do some uh, precision act uh, against a pandemic. Uh, it's a difficult one, I have to say. It has often been said in the discussion recently that Finland and Sweden have very different historical experiences. Many people in Finland are still remembering the wars against the Soviet Union and Sweden hasn't been in war for 200 years. Uh, how do you think that these different historical experiences will affect... Sorry, I cannot hear. Uh, can you hear me, Mikael? Uh, I, I, I'm asking if the different historical experiences between Sweden and Finland is going to affect the cooperation uh, on civil defense. Uh, are, can you hear me, Oli Pekka, or... Yeah, can you start with that and then we will, and then we will ask Mikael the same question. So you asked about the historical, uh, our, our historical experiences, have they affected how we deal with the pandemic? How it is going to affect the cooperation that you are, we are not talking about, if we are uh, looking future and in the future? Uh, well, I do not think that the pandemic uh, will in itself do anything uh, for our cooperation. And of course, uh, the historical connections between Finland and Sweden, they are always, we see them as a foundation uh, of this whole, of, of everything we do together because, uh, well, uh, he, we all know that we, we share uh, a broad common history. And also in the past crisis, uh, if, if we go back in history to the Second World War and all, we, we know that uh, Sweden has been there for us and that that is also what we want to emphasize in the future, that we will always try to assist our neighbors in the best possible way in the circumstances. But the pandemic in itself, it does not, uh, it, it is not a question uh, of relations. It is a question of how to deal with the pandemic. And afterwards, I am confident that we will sit down and we will have our both, both of our uh, experience reports to say and and then we look at them and we find the best practices together regarding the future that is what i hope and what i think will happen i i do think that uh, the the kind of experience that we've had on the military side uh, that really developed during the last couple of years uh, the cooperation between finland and sweden can be an inspiration also for civil defense and civil preparedness because I think they're linked to each other. We talk about the total defense uh, bill uh, and we see that the military defense is not stronger than the society. If society is not functioning, the military side of the equation will not work either. So there is a link to this. And also when we talk about cyber security, I know both Finland, your, your, you have both the the technology, but you know, you're also doing a lot of research on, on, on the issues of cybersecurity with the center. And I think we can do even more together on that uh, area, but also when it comes to these hyper uh, threats uh, that face our societies today, hybrid uh, threats that are not always going to the military level of conflict, but also, uh, or primarily, I would say, uh, uh, will be directed to, to civil society in peacetime, but also trying to uh, to to to, um, uh, to influence society. Uh, and I think we can do more together on that uh, issue as well. So uh, a lot of questions and also the robust side, Rescue EU. We're now kind of, I think Sweden ran, we have done so much investments in forest fighting, 
but uh, when it comes to airplanes and also when it comes to helicopters so we, we now have we're kind of evolving a hub for for uh, for uh, for forest fighting uh, when it comes to uh, uh, forest fires uh, fighting them from from air i think that's an interesting idea of what we can do in other fields where finland can experience in some areas we have more experience in one area and we share and we learn and we also build on the european uh, perspectives okay uh, thank you very much indeed um Oli Poika Parviainen, uh, State Secretary at the Ministry of uh, Interior Affairs in Finland, and Mikael Damberg, Minister of Interior Affairs here Kitos. in Tack. Sweden. Tack så mycket, Mikael Damberg och uh, Statssekreterare Oli Poika Parviainen. Kitos ja oikein paljon sinne Helsinkiin. Uh, vi ska fortsätta att diskutera. Hej och tack så mycket. Ha en bra fortsättning på dagen. Huvudet på även Jatko Adeile. Vi ska ta, eh, fortsätta och diskutera den här frågan ur ett myndighetsperspektiv. Och vi har därför bjudit in tillförordnade generaldirektören Camilla Asp från Svenska myndigheten för samhällsskydd och beredskap och Kimmo Kohvacka som är räddningsöverdirektör vid inrikesministeriet i Helsingfors. Välkomna till Vittoroa. Ja, och inledningsvis kommer vi ställa samma fråga till er båda två att få svara på. Eh, ni ska få ge er syn på hur den här avsiktsförklaringen kan omsättas i praktiken utifrån era respektive myndigheter. Eh, jag ber Camilla Asp eh, att börja. Varsågod Camilla. Tack så mycket för det och eh, då vill jag passa på också att tacka Folk och försvar och Finlands institut för att ordna det här viktiga seminariet och det känns jättebra och roligt att förstå så här digitalt tillsammans med min kollega Kimmo och visa på det goda bilaterala samma, eh, samarbetet som vi har. Så jag hoppas du Kimmo håller med om det när du ska tala. Eh, för det är ju så att vi redan idag har ju ett samarbete inte bara mellan Sverige och Finland utan som vi har tidigare i hela Norden. Och då har vi ju såklart utifrån att vi vill kunna bistå och hjälpa varandra när det händer olyckor och olika sorter av kriser men också dra nytta av varandras kompetenser och erfarenheter in i de arbeten man gör nationellt. Men eh, även om vi har ett samarbete så är det väldigt positivt att vi nu har den här avsiktsförklaringen på plats och eh, det blir ju en tydlighet kring vilken politisk ambition och riktning som är inom det här området. Så det blir en utgångspunkt för oss men då är frågan hur kommer vi ta det vidare och jag tänkte ge tre exempel på hur vi kommer ta det här vidare. Och den ena är den här självklara, hur kan vi ta emot och ge hjälp till varandra? Och som också har lyfts här tidigare, hur viktigt det är. Och det är klart att ibland kan det vara så att vi har kriser samtidigt som gör att det kan vara svårt att bistå varandra. Men vår ambition är ju verkligen att stötta varandra hela tiden och då får det inte finnas några hinder i vägen för att kunna genomföra eller för att ge stöd eller för att ta emot stöd för den delen. Och vi har nu precis satt igång ett arbete för att se över de praktiska förutsättningarna att kunna ta emot och ge stöd i kriser. Och det kan handla om sådana saker som att gå igenom och samordna förberedelser vid gränsövergångar. Att säkerställa att samband och kommunikationer fungerar. Och att vi har koll på rättsliga avtal som kan användas i olika sammanhang. Och vi behöver också säkerställa att nya förstärkningsresurser som utvecklas är interoperabla. Om vi till exempel skickar våra skopande flygplan till Finland vid en skogsplan så är det viktigt att vi redan har övat och testat. Så att det praktiska runt omkring fungerar också sömlöst mellan länderna. Så låt inte det praktiska stå i vägen för ambitionerna. Det andra området det är det som också har lyfts här tidigare, CBRNE. Och det här är ett område som också beskrevs här tidigare som har blivit allt mer viktigt att jobba med tillsammans. Och jag tror att Kimmo kommer att fördjupa sig lite mer i just de här frågorna. Men här jobbar vi tillsammans med Finland för att stärka vår förmåga. Och mycket det vi gör inom det här området hänger samman med den ambitionsökning som vi har i EU-arbetet på civilskyddsområdet. Där vi håller på att bygga upp ett system med gemensamma EU-finansierade förstärkningsresurser som kallas RESCIO. Och det nämndes ju här tidigare också. Ett viktigt område bidrar till bland annat saneringsområdet. 
Om det tredje exemplet jag tänkte ge, det handlar om cyberområdet. Och här har vi ett gott samarbete på nordisk basis med det gemensamma CERT-samarbetet. Och CERT står för Cyber Emergency Response Team. Och det här är faktiskt ett rätt avancerat samarbete. Och vad jag vet så finns det inga motsvarande samarbeten i andra regioner i Europa. Men det vi gör då är att vi regelbundet utbyter information om it-incidenter och hjälpas åt när det inträffar en it-incident. Och vi har också ett utvecklingsråd inom CERT-samarbete som handlar om att ta fram kommunikationsnät för utbyte av säkerhetsskyddsklassad information. Och sen för ett annat konkret men jätteviktigt område det är också att vi övar tillsammans. Sverige har en övning som heter NISO som vi kommer att genomföra och där Finland också deltar. Så viktiga samarbeten på gång och eh, jättebra med den här överenskommelsen så vi får ännu mer kraft i det här viktiga samarbetet. Och jag tänkte stanna där som en första inledning. Thank you Camilla. Uh, and Kimo Kohvaka, what, um, how will this letter of intent be put into practice on the Finnish side? Can you hear us, Kimo? No? Okay. Uh, yeah. The question yes. was how do yes. will you put this letter of intent in to practice in Finland? What, which are your priorities? Bästa och hörare, också jag är tacksam för möjligheten att delta i detta webinarium med det intressanta och aktuella temat. Hoppas att vi idag tillsammans med min kollega Camilla Askan belyser hur arbete i dessa frågor i våra länder emellan redan fungerar. Men också hur vi planerar att fördjupa detta samarbete. Och nu här övergår jag till att tala engelska. So we just heard about how, how my Swedish colleague Camilla uh, told us a bit about the practical side of the deepened cooperation. For uh, my point of view, uh, the introductory, I would like to emphasize that uh, cooperation between our two countries is already working, as mentioned here many times already uh, through our, our, by our minister and state secretary. But as I already said, the aim is to further strengthen the country's ability to prevent and deal with major disasters and crises. As Camilla said, uh, being able to give and receive assistance from each other is uh, indeed a uh, really important element of our cooperation. And we will look into, the, uh, into this uh, in the coming uh, months. As the current pandemic has shown, emergencies and crises uh, really are not limited to state borders, as we all know. As countries, Sweden and Finland are similar in many respects, uh, but there are also differences. If you think about the administration management models and the field of responsibilities, an uh, example of this is that uh, Finland, uh, for instance, does not have a large preparedness agency like MSB in a Swedish case. Uh, in our case, the Ministry of Interior is responsible for the civil protection and the civil prote pre pre preparedness questions, uh, civil defense questions, together with, for example, the uh, regional rescue services. The questions on security of supply is in Finland coordinated by NESA, National Emergency Supply Agency, which operates under the Ministry of Economic Affairs. Uh, knowing this and despite administrative differences, the cooperation works on every level. We have a very good and close cooperation both with the Minister of Justice and MSB when it comes to Minister of In Interior's point of view. Um, at this point, I would, uh, however, like to go back a bit uh, to the CBRN theme that Camilla and uh, our Minister and State uh, Secretary also already mentioned. 
is one of the concrete uh, and uh, perhaps you could say at this moment a main cooperation area in the, in the in this our uh, cooperation work as we heard also from the uh, 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 political level cbr is a very topical issue and an important field of cooperation between our countries. There is a need to strengthen the ability to respond to potential CBRN threats. This we can do by working together but bilaterally. Uh, I, I must emphasize that uh, cooperation is, is a nice word, but working together is deeping uh, or deep, uh, let's say, commitment to solving also these problems together. So working together bilaterally and also in international work, uh, forums such as uh, in, in the EU civil protection cooperation and as a, for instance, as a partner countries in NATO civil emergency planning, these are important fields. Uh, discussions on a bilateral EU CPR and cooperation, especially in the decontamination field, has been now, uh, let's say, uh, started our, our uh, cooperation uh, uh, mapping. Uh, we now are looking into, to, between Minister of the Interior from Finland and MSP currently, uh, what kind of uh, uh, deeper cooperation possibilities we have, for, for instance, in the decontamination areas. Uh, for my part, of course, naturally, I fully support this this work. Even if we are here to discuss the deepened bilateral cooperation, it's uh, several times here mentioned that uh, it's important also to say that that we have a good uh, cooperation in Nordic level. Finland is this year chairing the so-called Hague cooperation, which is a cooperation on crisis preparedness, civil defense and rescue services. In Haga area, we discuss many of the same questions as we do now bilaterally. The Haga cooperation has been ongoing since nine, uh, 2009 and is very important for both of our countries. The Haga ministers meet every year and we are planning a ministerial meeting in the end of this year in Helsinki. In the preparations for the deepened cooperation between our countries, we've been emphasizing the fact that the bilateral work will in no way uh, replace our Nordic cooperation. On the contrary, we see that it supports our deepened bilateral uh, work in many uh, ways. The same applies to, for example, the civil military cooperation, once again already mentioned here. The civil military cooperation at the Nordic level is a very topical this year, especially through the Nordefco Haga cooperation. Finland holds the chairmanships this year in Nordefco also, and we are planning uh, a first ever co-meeting between these working groups in October. As I said uh, before, uh, we see that the work on uh, all international forums, including EU cooperation and NATO civil preparedness work, support also our bilateral work. This uh, to, let's say, start introduction and now uh, further into uh, discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Vi hör här att trots olika förvaltningsmodeller och styrning så fungerar samarbetet väldigt bra på alla olika nivåer. Men vad finns det för utmaningar? Vilka är svårigheterna i ett sånt här samarbete? Camilla? Ja, men visst är det så att vi har lite olika förvaltningsmodeller. Och, men jag tycker inte att det i sig är några... Alltså det är en utgångspunkt som vi måste förhålla oss till och komma runt. Så att jag, jag ser det som ett givet ingångsläge. Eh, och sen när det gäller eh, utmaningar och svårigheter i samarbete, jag, jag tycker bara att det handlar om det här att skapa goda förutsättningar för samarbete som, som man behöver göra på flera olika sätt. Det handlar om det som vi gör, att skapa goda relationer, lära känna varandra, förstå varandras system. Eh, och det gör vi på många olika sätt och olika samarbetsforum. Men det handlar ju också om att, eh, att, att vi i praktiken gör saker tillsammans att vi övar tillsammans så där har vi övningar som vi har genomfört vi har också övningar på gång som handlar just till exempel om att ta emot och ge stöd hur det ska gå till praktiskt så att det är väl på det sättet man övervinner de hinder som finns. Tack. Kimmo Kowaka, uh, what do you see are the 
um, limitations or the difficulties in such a cooperation? Uh, thank you for the questions. I, 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 perhaps I'm a little bit strong over here. There are no difficulties. Uh, in, in fact, it's, I, I think the, basically it comes to uh, organizing and resources in the area. But uh, as we have seen, we have a strong... Uh, uh, we are seeing uh, together these goals and the, the let's say, the, the reasons why we are now, uh, let's say, deepening our cooperation. Uh, and I, I could say that uh, if you think about the uh, practical side of how to, let's say, uh, develop uh, exercise work, I, I think that um, uh, the, our, uh, the Minister Dunbag already said that perhaps we've been in the situation that we are counting on how good our, uh, let's say, or already existing cooperation is. But as uh, Camilla said, that we, we strongly have the possibility to emphasize, for instance, the exercise cooperation. We are now uh, having this uh, f uh, spring, we are having a cooperation uh, exercise in, in forest fighting in, here in Finland side and, and how to use the new de developed uh, aerial fire firefighting capabilities that uh, Sweden has been uh, developing. That's one area. But if you think about the, for instance, that you have an experience on civil military cooperation uh, in civil preparedness exercise uh, area, that is perhaps one area also that we could do more at this uh, very moment. But uh, sincerely, I think that there are no obstacles when it comes to, let's say, deepening cooperation, perhaps in practical ways, how to just plan and how to, how to resource those cooperation possibilities. Thank you. In, in the north, there are very closed cooperation between, for instance, with Haparanda and Tornio. They have the same fire brigade and are working very close together. What can you learn from those experiences on a very practical and local level when you are now starting to develop the cooperation on the national level? Kimo. I'm Tyvärr, jag har lite svårt att höra den frågan. Jag hörde inte riktigt vad som sades. Jag frågade om det här lokala samarbetet som vi har sett så mycket av i norr mellan Haparanda och Tornio, där man hjälper varandra att släcka bränderna på ömsesidor om gränsen och där räddningstjänsten jobbar väldigt tight tillsammans. Vad kan man lära sig av det här täta samarbetet, lokala och väldigt praktiska samarbetet? Vill, vill, Kimmo, eller, vill Kimmo börja? Do you want to, how do you want to okay, answer that you. question? Uh, it's very tr true that in, in the uh, northern parts of our, our countries, there's, a, there's actually, uh, you could say, non-existing borderlines because they are so fluent at going abroad if there is needed, both in rescue services, emergency medical services also. And uh, uh, perhaps... Uh, if you, if you think about that, how can we, let's say, learn from those experiences? Of course, it's uh, taking those experiences on the national level and uh, therefore, let's say, use the, that uh, practical side in, in uh, our further development. Uh, you already mentioned that uh, the forest fires in uh, 2018 were a good example where we were facing some trouble of organizing the whole of uh, the national, let's say, support uh, quickly enough and perhaps in that kind of resources that were uh, already, let's say, um, uh, have have experience in in uh, giving help abroad, and that northern area now has a very strong, uh, let's say, everyday cooperation. They practice also together the Barents uh, uh, area, uh, let's say, exercises further deepen this uh, capability. So. Uh, Perhaps you could say that uh, that is already existing, but we can perhaps more, let's say, take it wider to our national level, also in various parts of our 
our country and uh, perhaps in in if you think about joint exercises that experience could be let's say further uh, widened with a a national exercise uh, concept development perhaps thank you vad säger du Camilla hur ser du uh... Det här och jag kan egentligen bara exempel. understryka det som du säger Kimmo här att eh, det är ju också en jättevärdefull erfarenhet att vi har det här praktiska eh, samarbetet redan och, och, och för oss att ta med upp på nationell nivå så att eh, det, det, jag pratade tidigare om övningar men här har vi ju faktiskt eh, verksamhet som vi gör tillsammans redan nu i praktiken så otroligt lär, eh, värdefullt. Ja men det låter ju bra då kommer ljuset från norr även i de här sammanhangen. Då vill vi säga tack så mycket till Camilla Asp på Myndigheten för samhällsskydd och beredskap och Kim och Kovaka på det finska inrikesministeriet. Och vi ska nu börja runda av det här seminariet med ett par expertkommentarer. Och vi har därför med oss experter från försvarshögskolorna i Sverige och i Finland. Mika Hytiainen som är militärprofessor och docent vid den finska försvarshögskolan och sen en svensk expert. Och så har vi med oss Fredrik Binander som är chef för Centrum för totalförsvar och samhällets säkerhet vid försvarshögskolan i Sverige. Och FOS som det förkortas har fått i uppdrag att tillsammans med säkerhetskommittén i Finland genomföra ett program inkluderande högnivåforum och utbildning inom ramen för Hanaholm-initiativet som är ett samarbetsprogram mellan just Sverige och Finland. Fredrik, kan du berätta om vad det här högnivåforumet och den här utbildningen som ni ska starta upp? Vad är syftet med detta och vilka är målgrupperna för det? Ja, eh, tack så mycket. Eh, det kan jag gärna. Och då är det så att vi tycker att det här är ett väldigt välkommet tillskott. Det har funnits samarbete på de här frågorna och på den här nivån tidigare. Till exempel har vi utbytt kursdeltagare på den svenska Solbacka-kursen och på den finska motsvarigheten. Men nu är det då dags att lite mer strukturerat ha ett samarbete kring hur höga företrädare för myndigheter, företag som är indragna i de här frågorna, både krisberedskap och civilt försvar, tänker kring, planerar kring de här frågorna. Så att eh, vi, har, vi är precis i tagen nu att planera eh, den här utbildningen och vi ser mycket fram emot att få bedriva den under hösten och som då ska utminna i ett högnivåmöte där vi hoppas att kursdeltagarna ska komma fram till bra innovativa lösningar på en del gemensamma problem. För det tror vi också behövs. Det här är ett område med ett underskott av innovation och därför vill vi skapa lite Lite drag kring frågorna och få folk att tänka lite nytt också. Tack. Uh, in the framework of the Haga Declaration that was mentioned earlier here, adopted in 2009, uh, the, one of the purposes is to create a common culture between the Nordic countries in order to facilitate tighter cooperation. What is your experiences and perspective on this, Mika? Do you hear us, Mika? Yes, I hear you. But but the last words were just I didn't hear them. So the, yeah, the your your experiences and perspectives on the Titan Titan corporations inside the. Haga declaration. Still I have problems to hear. Regarding the training and education within the Haga declarations, what are your experience from the Finnish defense uh, um, society? <laughs> Thank you. Now I heard it loud and clear. Well, actually I have a lot of experience in that because uh, When I was a director in the in the organization that is 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 about the same as FOA used to be in Sweden, not FOA, which is wider, but but as a research organization, we already had a lot of uh, discussions, for example, with CBRE, and uh, and uh, it was before the Nordef call, so it was about more than 10 years ago. I have also participated in Barents Rescue, which is actually 
uh, even wider than the, than the Nordic cooperation in the north, because the Russians are also also there, but but they are more like um, every days, every days things. And uh, I see that uh, that there's no problem at, at at any kind to have that kind of things together. It's more like uh, resources, but it's all also like those guys who are making decisions and i'm not meaning also the politicians they have to kind of put them in the priority list enough high enough so so that we can actually do those things but but my experiences are very very good in that respect thanks which are your main expectations now concerning the tightening cooperation in civil defense uh I would say that 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 the, the beginning of uh, of the, that that work with the security committee, which actually is is the courses are are done by the Finnish uh, National Defence University, uh, that's that's a good good starting point. But I would like to see more cooperation also in the kind of tactical level. We have a lot of things that ongoing on the on the strategic level. Also in the material level, it's, there are possibilities, and then in the in the training. But to to make kind of uh, concepts together uh, are the, uh, is one of the things that I would I, I would like to see. And for example, the the concept of the of the civil defense, as the as, as your minister pointed out, that that you are you kind of forgot that, and we still have it. Well, I have to say, well, I hope that Kimmo is listening here because I, I'm, I'm trying to say something that he doesn't maybe like, is that, that well, we have the concept, but it, it needs a lot of dusting. And it's not 2.0, it's not something that we have to have today. It's something that we used to have and we have improved it a bit. But, but to, to work together, with that new idea of what the civil defense is in the in the future, I would say that that's that's my highest expectation actually. Thanks. Tack, Fredrik. Vad ser du att länderna kan vinna på det här samarbetet vad gäller civilt försvar och krisberedskap? Ja, jag skulle vilja börja med. Jag, jag tror flera har varit inne på det att logiken på de här två områdena skiljer ju sig ganska mycket åt. Och särskilt den svenska krisberedskapen är ju byggd nerifrån och upp så att säga. Eh, kriser handlar i kommunerna så har redan Räddningsverket på sin tid och vi har haft en närhetsprincip som gör att vi vill bygga resurser nära saker och ting händer. Men alltså vilt försvar av nödvändighet är byggt tvärtom, uppifrån och ned. Det är ett externt hot vi bygger för att skydda oss emot. Och därför måste statsmakten i första hand äga det här systemet. Och det ger oss både en del problem men också stora möjligheter till samarbete skulle jag vilja säga på området civilt försvar. Där några av de största frågorna som vi bara har börjat fundera på det är hur upphandlar vi säkra tjänster för vår kritiska infrastruktur för hur vi ska leda landet i svåra situationer och krig. Den typen av frågor tror jag vi kan göra mycket tillsammans på. Därför att det finska och det svenska näringslivet är ganska tätt sammanknutet redan nu. Och om vi lägger det här lastret på hur vi upphandlar saker och vilka företag och vilka ägarkonstellationer som betraktas som mer eller mindre säkra. Det finns en massa sådana saker vi kan göra. Och här vill jag också bara tillägga att här kan vi också lära oss en hel del av Finland som, som har tittat på upphandlingslagstiftning i ett EU-perspektiv betydligt eh, ska vi säga, tuffare än vad Sverige traditionellt har gjort och använt sig av säkerhetsundantag och så vidare. Så jag, jag tror att liksom utanför det, det absolut närmaste att några myndigheter håller på att planera för de civila försvarens behov så finns det i nästa steg det som Sverige bara har börjat ta tag i ganska mycket och, och samarbeta kring. Så, så det tror jag är, är jätteintressant och någonting som bör för sig gå på flera nivåer eh, redan från och med nu. Vad är det du Fredrik som du tycker att Sverige ska lära sig av Finland? Du nämnde upphandling till exempel men och sen nämnde du att i Sverige så är organisationen här byggd nerifrån och upp. Borde den byggas åt andra hållet som man delvis kanske då har gjort i Finland? 
Ja, alltså, I Sverige så har vi det krisberedskapssystem vi har och vi har go- ganska goda erfarenheter av det ända tills vi kommer till de stora nationella kriserna som till exempel eh, covid-19. Där har det sina begränsningar. Där blir det så att det krävs en nationell samordning av en nivå som vårt system inte i första hand är byggt för. Och då kommer vi till det här med nationella förstärkningsresurser som Camilla var inne på och där ingår också ledningsresurser, där ingår förmåga att leda nationella insatser på den här nivån och här tror jag vi har lärt oss mycket egentligen i båda länderna på ett krisberedskaps och delar av de lärdomarna kan vi faktiskt ta också till det civila försvaret och hur vi planerar för det därför att vi måste bli bättre Regeringen måste bli bättre på att styra riket och använda sina myndigheter för att göra det. Det är en ganska svår samhälls eh, eh, ska vi säga, struktur att försöka styra just nu. Där vi har liksom lejt ut ganska mycket till näringsliv och andra. Och då gäller det att ta de tyglar man har och faktiskt förstärka dem för att kunna ha en planering för ett riktigt civilt försvar. Och där tror jag att Finland har inte gett upp lika många styrmedel som Sverige har gjort under de senaste 25-30 åren. Och det kanske vi ska se på om det finns legala förvaltningsmässiga möjligheter att återta en del av de styrmöjligheter som, som vi i Sverige inte längre tillämpar. And Mika, what would you say that Finland can perhaps learn from Sweden? Uh, I would say that, that actually... I would first like to point out that also in a, in a way Finnish system is kind of a bottom up system because we have a very big reserve for example in the in the army about 4% of the of the of the army's uh, people are, are are those who are actually uh, career officers uh, and uh, i would say that 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 is a common common uh, or, or something that we could divide And, and share to balance the, that kind of what uh, what Fredrik said about Nairhead's principle. So, so not to take kind of command, but to but to go there and help and put the put the wider uh, reserves in the in the place. And if I see, for example, Lapland or Åland Islands, but there's no model that that can can kind of uh, is it's the same in there. So you have to be kind of uh, thinking in the in the in the area and i have to say that that uh, as as already your minister said that that uh, many things that that we use in in, in our our civil defense uh, is actually uh, taking from sweden i was first time in the fua in the 1995 as a researcher uh, and looking for how the how how bombing is is going to to affect in the in the city because we we had that kind of bombings but we had kind of forgotten them and uh, i think that that there are a lot of things that we can do together and and that's one thing that that i want to pinpoint is that when we are talking about the shared competence there are two kinds of sharing the one kind is doing something similar and then kind of half and half or whatever to divide the resources or do actually something different but and then combine them and i think that's the real interdependency and i i think that we should kind of try to find those aspects and there's a, there's still a lot of for us Finns to to learn from sweden so so no doubt that, about that thanks i just wanted to remember you uh, about the haga declaration from 2019 It said that, that the declaration embraces a common vision, a robust north without borders. But hasn't the recent corona crisis showed that in a very tough situation, national interests are put ahead of cooperation? What do you say, Mati? Uh, well, I have to say that, that that yes i share the share your your vision in that but uh, i have to say also that 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 was something that we we wasn't prepared to and it was so widespread a new situation that i can't compare it to 
any crisis that I have I have seen or prepared before. Of course, there have been a lot of discussion about pandemic, but but uh, what the virus actually was was something that the whole science community in the whole world didn't know. Mm-hmm. And if I now compare it with, for example, with hybrid warfare or, or hybrid affections, or even Russia, which hasn't been mentioned at, at, at all in the, in the, today, but I, I, I pinpointed it now. So I don't think that, 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 that this kind of COVID is, is something that we should take cautiously. We, we should learn about that. But I, I'm, I'm quite certain that we, it, it wouldn't happen if, if we are talking, for example, in that kind of civil defense issue. So something that we are discussing now. Thanks. Fredrik, är det möjligt att förutse kriser överhuvudtaget? De vi har varit med om är ju Estonia, det är tsunamin, det är skogsbränder och det är nu pandemin. Väldigt, väldigt olika till sin karaktär. Är det möjligt att bygga upp ett system för krisberedskap och förutse den här typen av händelser? Det enda jag vet om det är att vi måste försöka. Därför att de kriser vi har förberett oss för blir inte lika stora kriser. Och det slår mig till exempel hur utvecklade våra pandemiplaner i västvärlden var efter fågel- och svininfluenserna. Och hur, hur lite vi har haft nytta av de pandemiplanerna nu. Vi, vi måste ha system för krisberedskap och för olika oväntade händelser som har en förmåga att lära sig och utvecklas. Och vi kommer inte kunna förutse allt. Det kommer att kunna trilla en meteor i huvudet på oss eh, när som helst. Men alla de problem vi har förutsett och byggt en del resurser för och särskilt gemensamma resurser som vi kan pola och, och använda enligt en, en distribuerad princip desto bättre rustade kommer vi att vara och desto färre av de här ska vi säga, systemskakande kriserna kommer vi gå igenom. De länder som var förberedda på en pandemi har gjort det betydligt bättre än de som inte var det. Och vi kan bara titta på de som har haft utbrott av coronavirus de senaste 20 åren. De hade en annan förberedelse både i systemet och hur regering och myndigheter betedde sig upp. Men framförallt kanske hur medborgarna såg på problemet och hur de var beredda att anpassa sig till nya förutsättningar. Och det här tycker jag är grundläggande att... Det handlar om att förebygga olika typer av risker. Vi kommer aldrig kunna ta hand om alla, men vi kan jobba med dem som vetenskap och beprövad erfarenhet säger att vi kommer att behöva ta, ta hand om. Tack. Mika, you mentioned uh, Russia for instance uh, quite recently here. What will what kind of signal to the other countries or other partners for that reason as well? Will this cooperation bring with it? Uh, that's a good question. Of course, that this is something that we do all the time, so it it shouldn't be any any surprise to them. But I have seen, or uh, I actually tracked about what Lithuania did in 2015, when they actually sent also a small booklet of 100 pages almost to every home, and it was there were instructions what to do if your Of if your country is occupied, and I, I I think that this is also a signaling, also to the Russia that that at least in the hybrid cases, uh, we are working together and and we are doing the things together, and we are stronger in together. So 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 I, I would say that this is also in, in that way this is useful, even though that uh, that uh, that it's it's not the main goal in here. And of course, it's not offending anyone, so you can't actually kind of turn it to the to the kind of offensive actions. I would say that that that's easy to say that 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 it's not the case. Thanks. Okay. Uh, we are running out of time, but I think we just finally would would look try to look a little bit ahead. Do you think that this cooperation will? lead to that Sweden and Finland will be safer places. What is your expect, expectation on the cooperation in the longer run? Uh, if we start with you, Mika. Uh, I would say that I would say that 
of course, yes. But if you see our history, for example, 20 years back, we are a lot safer societies than, than we used to be, for example, in the 1990s. Uh, but of course, there is a big problem is, is coming and it's climate change. And that kind of uh, can change the whole whole things that we are now discussing again. And it's, it's not actually men- mentioned in the in the in the in the treaty also. So I didn't mention that. But but there's one big cloud and that it's not Russia and it's not Estonia and it's not even maybe COVID. But 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 the climate change is something that we should take into into the consideration also in this forum. Thanks. We will take care of that in another seminar, I think. Vad säger du, Fredrik? Vad vad tror du att det här kommer att leda till på lite längre sikt? Kommer Finland och Sverige att bli säkrare ställen att leva på? Uh, ja, nej. Jag tror ett samarbete kommer att innebära att vi får betydligt säkrare samhällen än om vi inte hade haft det här samarbetet. Men, men å andra sidan så går vi in i en betydligt mer turbulent tid över de närmaste 10-20 åren med ökade säkerhetspolitiska spänningar och också det som Mika tar upp som jag tror kommer prägla vår samhällsutveckling och det hur vi hanterar eh, miljöhoten som vi står inför och hur vi ställer om våra samarbeten för att kunna fungera i den här nya situationen. Så att jag tror att eh, säkerhet kommer att vara dyrare för oss att köpa och vi kommer att behöva investera mycket mer i våra säkerhetsbehov. Och det tror jag vi gör bäst tillsammans, Sverige och Finland men också inom EU-kretsen. Tack så mycket. Det var allt som vi hinner med för idag. Tack Fredrik Benander och tack Mika Hytjainen från svenska respektive finska försvarshögskolorna. För den som vill se seminariet igen så finns det att titta på våra organisationers respektive hemsidor. Och jag ber att få tacka alla våra medverkande och alla er som har följt seminariet idag. Tack så hemskt mycket. Jag Kiinnostavasta puheenvuoroista tämä keskustelu jatkuu ihan, ihan varmasti. Seminaari on nauhoitettu ja on katsottavissa Folkoförsvar ja Finlandsinstitutetin kotisivun kautta. Me avaamme muuten uuden kotisivun huomenna. Tervetuloa sinne katsomaan. Kiitoksia ja näkemiin.